Yeah, I, after the presentation, I, I, I really am having two worries. Because with plans, what we, we, we normally do, um, and, and if you project to do an inventory in an area, you, you calculate the size of the area and you do something like a sampling intensity. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, with this size, this area, I want to take at this level of sample intensity and I'll put this number of plots there. So I don't know. In that case, we know that we have to put 25 plots here and at the, at the 15 plot, you realize mm -hmm. that, hey, you have all your, your, most of the species. What do you do? Do you stop it there or do you continue the 25 plots? I, in a results-based sampling world, you would add plots until you seem to be done. Okay. Okay? Now, notice that, remember, go, go back to the definitions that I gave of inventory versus sample. Mm -hmm. Inventory is something that you can do only when you can detect and count mm -hmm. and catalog everything. Okay. And your sample plots are much more in a world of sampling because you know you put out 50 plots mm -hmm. but you don't know that there's some additional habitat or additional microhabitat that wouldn't have it more plants so you've kind of set it up in a sampling world <coughs> but you could turn that into an inventory context by picking remember you need a comparable unit of effort for the x-axis of these plots, okay? Or the, the horizontal in that, in that matrix over there. Okay. It's time intensive, I know, but you could use your plots as those units of effort, okay? okay? And in fact, there's, a, there's another level, and I think Arturo has put more thought into this than I have. Um, you could very easily make this hierarchical. So you could imagine counting effort as you know, hours of work, first hour, second hour, third hour, fourth hour, within a plot. And then a second hierarchical level being the plots. And then the plots could be distributed within major habitat types on a local landscape. And so essentially what you're doing is you're going up from a single, let's say, 10 by 10 meter sampling plot mm -hmm. to a whole habitat, to a whole landscape. And at each level, you can look at the accumulation and the completeness, okay? And at each level, you can guess at how many species are left out. How many species have I likely not found within this plot? How many species have I likely not found within this habitat, and how many species have I likely not found within this local landscape? So it's a hierarchical analysis, something I've thought about a lot, but certainly not, not done yet. It's very doable. Sorry, more questions? <coughs> okay, one last bit. We're going to talk a little bit about scale. And this takes us back rather quickly to the regional question. Okay? Everything I've talked to you about up till now has been points. You know, and for insect people, points are what? A square meter? And for bird people, I'm ashamed to say it, but our points are usually how far can a bird person walk in a day? <laughs> So we're rather coarse. <clears throat> so even then, when we want to go to a regional perspective, we very quickly get into issues of scale, OK, and resolution. So this is a virtual herbarium for Mexico. The publication that I gave you um, was an analysis of parallel data for Brazil. And my point is very simply, you know, if I look at a country at differing resolutions, I get very different answers. So if my pixel, this is work from Jorge Soberon, by the way, I stole it from him, <laughs> um, but stole with credit. 
Um, if my characterization of my region is in one pixel, then I've got a very coarse scale, right? Very coarse spatial resolution, but I've got tons of data, 691,000 records. But I can start dividing that up. And we can come all the way down to a pixel like that. And remember what we've talked about. At this level, we're very much closer to a single site. Okay, and you're going to hear about alpha and beta diversity. We're much more measuring alpha diversity. At this level, we've got deserts, we've got sea channels, we've got mountain ranges, high desert, lowland rainforest. There's a huge amount of diversity in there. So all of Mexico, you can see about 1,300 species of birds. But the richest site in Mexico, single site, would be somewhere down here with about 220 species of birds. All the rest is between site diversity. So what Jorge did was to do a series of completeness analyses, starting at one pixel and then splitting that into four, and then splitting those into four, and then splitting those into four. And so watch this. At the level of the whole country, our inventory is essentially done. It's 78% complete. <coughs> Probably more than that if you had better access to data. When we go to five, uh, 500,000 square kilometers, pretty big pixels, you can see most of the country is pretty well known. But as we come to finer and finer pixels, look at this, we start getting gaps. Okay, and those are still pretty big. You know, those are, those are still very large areas. Let's go finer. <coughs> okay, those are 22 by 22 kilometers. Those are still big pixels. And notice now that we have some really big gaps. Okay. And now just for fun, five kilometer pixels. At this scale, you know nothing. Okay? It's 5.3 on a side. Remember, 25-ish kilometers squared. And if we took this down to one square kilometer, you literally know nothing. And you know nothing for two reasons. One is that there are gaps amongst what little you do know, but the other is that you're not able to aggregate data and learn from nearby points. Okay? No, this is, this is the plant data. Again, remember I very artfully stole this from Soberon. I think it's published, but I stole the slides. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the point from this multi-scalar thinking is that there's really no wrong answer or no right answer. This is looking at local knowledge and a couple scales up is looking at kind of local landscapes or regional landscapes. Um, but you do get very, very different answers at different spatial resolutions. And so one of the things that we've been trying to do in the precursors to this course has been to try to pick an optimal resolution. And maybe there is no optimal resolution, but at least we've been trying to pick one resolution. Okay? Essentially what we want to do is not have a bunch of empty pictures of your countries and regions, but pick a level of aggregation. You know, maybe we're talking back to this. Pick a level of aggregation that can still point out big gaps, but not be so pessimistic that you just say, okay, we're starting at zero. Okay? You know, we want 
you all to have a short list of highest priorities of where you would go if you were trying to finish the inventory of your region. And then in the second half of your career, you can do the real fine details, okay? So, just to sum up, um, these inventory statistics give us a quantitative approach to understanding how complete biotic inventories are. They are a crucial element in understanding inventory data to the point where I would say if you read a paper that is a flora of or a birds of or a sarambicids of or whatever, and it doesn't do some sort of analysis of the completeness, I'm talking about modern papers, it's not a complete paper and I would say it's not publishable, right? Because you know somebody tells you, here are a hundred species of birds from this place. Oh, what does that mean? You know, those sites where I was in the Mongolian deserts, there aren't a hundred species there, and maybe if you stayed there for 10 years and saw every last migratory species, maybe you get to a hundred and that is done. Whereas sites in the Congo or in the Amazon, a hundred species is partial. So those inventory graphics and statistics really give us a way of thinking about what that list means. Is it a full list? Is it a partial list? Is it getting down to the, the very last details? Or is it just a start? Okay? So it's very key in documenting which sites are assessed thoroughly. Very, very important in understanding absence. You know, maybe there's a flora of some mountain in the Cameroon Mountains, Moses, and it doesn't mention a species. Now, you know those, those plants. Maybe you can say, well, any botanist who walks into a forest will see this species. So it must not be there. But it would also help to see some accumulation curves and some statistics that might suggest, no, there's still 100 species left to discover there, or uh, this, is, this is done. So maybe I can believe the absence of that species. Okay? Certainly, these statistics allow us to optimize our use of resources in future inventory efforts. And certainly, they are crucial to conservation efforts where if you're going to invest in a protected area, you probably ought to know clearly which species that area protects and which species that area doesn't protect.